great surname. Can you give me something of the idea of where that name comes from? Well, it's one of those nobody really knows surnames, but the research that I've done seems to suggest that it's families that came over from Holland in the Middle Ages to drain the fens. And it's, it's a really proud surname of King of the Ditches. So it's, it's those who emptied the dikes or created the dikes, that sort of thing. Because it sounds quite grand. But it actually, sounds quite they're, grand. They're but... almost navvies. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's more humble than that. Yes, <laughs> yes. And you came to Chumagna during lockdown, uh, or at least we weren't fully open again. What was it like to come to the village when it was in that strange state? I'd just gone through a, a vacancy in the parishes I'd been in, in Flaxborton and Barrow Gurney and Long Ashton. And that had been the sort of most extensive part of lockdown. And so I suppose I'd already picked up quite a lot of um, experience of how we be church, how the communities survive and grow. And of course, when I came here, there's a difference between where I was before and where I am now in that there were shops and things that people could get to very, very easily without having to rely on neighbours in the same way that perhaps we had elsewhere. But we had a great welcome. I mean, we had a fantastic welcome. People here were sort of on board for us coming and there was lots and lots of love being shown and generosity being shown as we arrived. And you very mentioned you went very far away, so you know this area pretty well. A bit, but I must say that this, the east side of the A38, has its own mysteries and its own feel about it. I certainly think the other side of the A38, there's an open and expansiveness of the landscape that perhaps you're not sort of... I, here, there's Dundry Hill does lower a bit and sort of shade and shadow things a little bit. Um, the other side, you're sort of feeling a bit close to the sea, perhaps. Uh, and also, I think you look very much towards Bristol there. Whereas here, I'm feeling people look more towards Wells. Certainly church people look more towards Wells. And, and people say, oh, yeah, we go shopping in Wells, but we don't go to Bristol. But you knew Chew Magna before. You've been and we knew Chew. Like most people, we've been stuck in traffic going through Chew Magna. Yes. <laughs> so as we move into more normal-ish times or new normal times post-COVID. How do you balance the concerns that some people have about still wearing masks and being concerned about social distancing and other people who just want to get on with life? We're being fairly conservative with a small C on that score. We are encouraging mask wearing if you feel that that's best for the, those around you. And I think we're trying to take that line is that you've got to remember that the mask wearing is to protect others, not really to protect yourself. And we're still only giving communion as bread rather than bread and wine, because in tradition in the Church of England is that you have one common cup, the chalice, that's given round to everybody. And certainly not everybody is ready to, to drink from that. So until a little time after Easter, we're holding back on that. So yes, we are, we've come back to coffee and, and we've come back to having time of, of fellowship after the service because that's as important as being there for the worship it's as it's as much part of church as anything else and we we definitely have missed that people have really missed that chance to sit and chat and we are living through such strange times daily now we're seeing shocking images on our televisions from ukraine uh, and that's only one of the big things that are affecting life at the minute. But how do you try and remain positive when we're seeing such troubling things happening on so many aspects of our lives? You can't always remain positive. I think the Christian faith, we have this time, Lent, that focuses us on Christ's journey to the cross, which is the ultimate moment of despair. And yet it's followed by Easter Day which pulls out of the utter blackness, the utter emptiness, this amazing moment of hope, this saying, oh, love will come again, life will come again. And you have to hold on to that sometimes. And you have to look for those little moments in the darkness, in what's been going on in Ukraine. There has been such an outpouring of love and care from people around the world 
people, individuals doing so much for others that they'll, they'll never meet, that you have to hang on to those and say, we can do better and we will do better. We're now facing cost of living rises and behind it all is this climate crisis which none of us can really fully grapple with. What do you think the church's role can be in these complicated and often quite politically charged times? The church, I think, is always struggling to understand how political Christianity is. I think Christianity is political from the word go. It's not party political, but it's about that saying, OK, the weakest are the most important. The voiceless are the ones Christ came for. And that's all of creation, every species. So the church is beginning to refocus and say, actually, yeah, OK, so all you churches, you really need to look at your carbon footprint. You need to start making those changes that are necessary to cut back on all that you're doing that's, that's wasting energy. And look at the grounds we've got here. This could be a fantastic wildlife corridor. This is an area that should be worked on for biodiversity. And we've got plans and we're working with Rewild Chew, but it's, it's, it's an up and down thing because there's lots of different issues we've got to work through. Um, the parish council has just paid for some bird boxes that, that are, you can see dotted around us and they're for specific species of birds. They're not just generic ones. So there's tree creepers as, amongst other things. So, you know, these little ways, every little way, can help us move forwards. But also I think historically the church has got a voice to say, actually, twas ever thus, these things have always mattered and the whole of creation matters to God, not just humanity. And I think if we can begin to bring that back out, then that's important. You talked about the rise in cost of living and one of the little just small seed sort of, 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 of a project we've got just starting is that our churches are going to have a food box in the building of long life uh, products, toiletries, sanitary products that anybody can just come in and, and say, oh, I, mean, I really need, I mean, I'm in need. It's not a long term solution, it's a short term solution. If you need a packet of rice, you need some loo paper, whatever. And that's going to be in church here in St Andrews and in some of our other churches, in you know, our group of churches, um, from you know, next week or so onwards, just as a way of tidying people over. Long term, we're not you know, sure where we can help, but certainly we, in some of our churches, provide facilities where people can bring things that we can give to the food banks in the area. And that's the one way of helping. And it's just talking to people and saying, you know, listening and finding out where the need is. In villages, it's quite often hidden. And although our villages tend to look at, on the surface as if they're, shall we say, well off, you know, um, you don't always know what's going on underneath the surface. And that's where just having those conversations over coffee, chatting to people in the street, having the churches open for people to come and sit, it helps, it all helps. As you think about Easter and its message in today's world, what do you think the message of Easter might be? Never give up. I think that's one of the messages of Easter. When it all seems utterly hopeless, hope can still be there. From a, a really strong Christian point of view, it is that Christ breaking the boundaries of everything we know as limitations, of Christ saying, okay, I'm alive again. Give me some fish to eat. I am someone you know, who needs to eat. I'm physical and at the same time, but I can disappear. I can walk through the walls. Time and space do not hold me. And that's just saying there is much more to who we are, to what it means to being human and being on this planet than perhaps we always think about in ourselves. We can be bigger, we can be bolder, we can be more imaginative than perhaps we limit ourselves to and perhaps society limits us to. And I think the real message of Christianity is 
we are people who can just get out there and be and be use our imaginations use our creativity and if we do that we can change the world